I am pleased to introduce our work, Wearable Subtitles, Augmenting Spoken Communication with Lightweight Eyewear for All Day Captioning. My name is Alex Olwal, and this is work that was conducted in Google Research with my colleagues Kevin Balki, Dmitry Votintsev, Thad Starner, Paula Khan, Bonnie Chin, and Benoit Korda. Mobile apps, which transcribe spoken conversation to text in real time, can help deaf and hard of hearing individuals follow spoken conversations more easily than when relying only on context and lip reading. While we acknowledge that not all deaf or hard of hearing individuals want to use sound or captioning technologies, prior work has demonstrated that many people would find captioning technologies desirable and useful in everyday activities. However, Transcription apps require users to look down at their phone, which can make it challenging to maintain eye contact or situational awareness. Similarly, the need to regularly reference a handheld device can make many common social interactions difficult, such as conversing while eating or walking. Researchers have explored ways to address such challenges through head-worn displays. For example, in 2013, Google supported Georgia Tech's captioning on glass effort which used speech-to-text to create a head-worn captioning system. The system was, however, focused on short conversations given the display, which was centered high in the visual field and a battery life that was designed for brief, glanceable interactions. In wearable subtitles, we discuss proof-of-concept eyewear that transcribes speech and ambient sound into visual representations that people who are deaf or hard of hearing can use during daily social interactions. We developed a series of research prototypes designed for all-day use that are hands-free and allow the user to read what is being spoken while still visually engaging with their conversational partners. The architecture is designed to support both cloud-based and standalone offline transcription with all-day battery life. Please be careful, this fish has a lot of bones. Oh, really? Thank you for telling me this. Sarah, would you like some water? Yeah, I would love some water, please. I'll give you water. Thank you. Our user studies with deaf and hard of hearing participants indicate that headphone displays can help resolve a number of challenges with current phone transcription solutions and can facilitate communication through privately transcribed text, hands-free use, improved mobility, and more socially acceptable interactions. To learn more about challenges for heads-up real-time transcription in mobile contexts, our team conducted a brief large-scale online survey in the U.S. with 501 participants who are regular users of hearing-related assistive technologies. Participants were asked about scenarios that they experience on a daily basis in which they might experience difficulty hearing while using their current assistive technology. The range of problematic scenarios provides a motivation for more subtle, comfortable communication devices with all-day power to mitigate difficulties in everyday scenarios. To enable all-day wearable subtitles experience, we have to carefully consider not only transcribing latency, but also make correct architectural decisions about communication and computational distribution between eyewear, mobile device, and the cloud services. With the eyewear functioning as a thin client receiving only user commands and transcribed text from the phone, the payload from the glasses to the phone at this time is also minimal, as all audio is captured using phone microphones or remote microphones connected to the phone. Now let's zoom into the eyewear electronics architecture. At the heart of the system, you'll find an all-in-one low-cost SOC from MediaTek MT2523D. Originally designed for wrist-worn devices, it features an integrated Cortex-M4 processor running at uh, 208 MHz with the possibility of dynamic frequency scaling to further power savings. Power management unit is also built in and features a triage of switching and linear regulators powering the numerous power rails uh, with the battery terminals as a single power input. Lastly, the SOC has a built-in DLE transceiver with a sufficient sensitivity, transmit power and efficiency to have a reliable yet lower power communication channel to the phone. On top of the SOC, we had to add all the uh, user interaction elements, micro display with the appropriate power regulators, user buttons, and an LED. <clears throat> 
LED is only used when the user is not wearing the device for indications such as glasses are powering off, glasses are on, or batteries too low. The user buttons are comprised of a power button tied directly into the power uh, management unit and uh, two buttons that are handled by our logic and can be used for display brightness adjustments or modes of transcription. All the features of the system are fitted onto a single board that is residing in the right temple of the glasses. Here is a zoomed in version. The PCB features eight layer stack with tightly placed components to fit into a non-obtrusive and lightweight temple. Interestingly enough, one of the most challenging components to design into the system uh, turned out to be the mechanical buttons. The tactile switches had to be sufficiently small to fit onto the board, yet providing large enough surface for depression and good enough tactile response. That took quite a few electromechanical iterations to get this into an acceptable state. Proper fixation of the board in combination with guided uh, caps that go over the button's domes helped with good overall design. After the first design iteration, we had conducted a number of user interviews that show that there are areas of electromechanical as well as firmware and software stack improvements. I will focus on the hardware aspects in the next few slides. One fairly straightforward technical challenge was resolved after the participants started complaining about the device disconnect. As it turned out, the antenna layout was missing critical radiative traces, which resulted in poor transmit and receive performance. Replacing the antenna with a chip antenna of the appropriate characteristics fixed the problem. Much more fundamental challenge was to come, uh, come up with a design that would be able to accommodate a wide variety of users with their unique facial features and geometries. As seen on the graph, most challenges were associated uh, with the display not being fully visible, not optimally located in the field of view, or disappearing over time as the glasses would move on the person's head. It is an especially challenging problem given the research nature of the project, as there were no resources to design and build unique mechanical arrangements fitted to every user. To mitigate the challenge with the display placement and visibility, we designed a modular aspect in the mechanical arrangement of the glasses, adjustable in V1 or interchangeable in V2 nose bridges. The adjustable, bendable or sliding bridge made of cut steel plates did a decent job in providing independent adjustments for interpupillary distance or wrap. The challenge with this method is that it uh, was not an easy fitting procedure and also wasn't stiff enough and would get out of fitted position over time, significantly affecting display vis position um, and visibility. As the next step, we've introduced an interchangeable nose bridge like shown in the figure to the right. The users would go over a fairly quick fitting process. Several facial measurements such as Apex and Ape IPD would help us narrow down the bridge selection to only a few, and we would try fitting a user with an optimum nose bridge through several iterations. <clears throat> we could clearly see the improvements in the display visibility, position, and fit thanks to this methodology. Another aspect that was addressed as part of making the glasses comfortable is weight distribution. The V1 design placed all the system components in the temples, and as a result, the weight of the device rests primarily on the nose, up to 78% of the overall weight. Changing the power architecture to use two smaller batteries located behind the user's ears moves the center of mass backwards, reducing the nose weight uh, to 56%. As a result, person's nose is less stressed and the glasses are much less prone to sliding down the nose. Individually adjustable nose pads and per user fitted swappable nose bridges enable the device to conform to user's face and improve both comfort and display legibility. The two largest challenges to device usability in user studies were Bluetooth connectivity and display legibility. We addressed these factors by building a highly fault-tolerant Bluetooth firmware implementation that could recover from failures in the MediaTek and Android Bluetooth stacks, and by implementing rendering improvements for text display to make the transcript smoother and easier to read. We also improved battery life by characterizing the power consumption of the major system components and mitigating each drain with a software solution. Batched transmission, low power modes, display brightness control, and auto off increased battery life significantly. Here we show the relationship between transmission efficiency and the Bluetooth transmission interval and data block size. 
By packing more bytes into individual transmission events and sending them more infrequently, we can improve battery life. Our Bluetooth implementation leverages this strategy for non-latency critical data, such as events logging. For latency critical data, such as the transcript updates, we transmit smaller events more frequently, trading off power consumption in favor of user experience. The display backlight is the single largest consumer of battery energy. Here, we show the relationship between backlight level and battery life. By adjusting the display brightness to match ambient light levels and by turning off the display while not in use, we can approach 15 hours of battery life. To iterate quickly, we develop tools to enable controlling our captioning devices. Our JavaScript binding in our Android service application enables building web apps that can be loaded like any other web page, but which are capable of communicating with the captioning service to control the paired device. Our Python API binding provides for rapid prototyping natively, communicating with the captioning device using the built-in Bluetooth radios on any Mac or Linux computer. We built applications in Python that enabled us to quickly explore new user interface designs together with our UX design collaborators, as well as to easily test the display quality of each device without needing to pair it to a phone. We also developed bench test applications that measure connection latency and throughput and exercise other system functionality for hardware validation. These test applications were used to generate the efficiency graph shown previously. Here, we show two test patterns used to validate the display and graphics engine performance. The Python API gives full control over the graphics API, enabling quickly prototyping user interfaces without having to either rebuild the device firmware or deploy an app to an Android device. One hour in-person sessions were conducted with six participants to compare the social and physical comfort of captioning on a mobile device versus on eyewear. Two activity conditions were considered during these sessions, engaging in group conversations while being stationary and while being in motion. Upon experiencing both of these conditions and activities, participants shared that the eyewear was easier to use while walking and that it was more discreet than using a phone. The eyewear also resulted in higher levels of awareness of the environment and of who was speaking. In comparison to using a mobile phone for captions, the participant explained, the capacity to have other people talking and have me actually know what's going on instead of me going off of other people's body movements that feels freeing. The prototype also showed more favorable ratings than the first version of the prototype, namely across measures like fit, caption visibility, clarity of field of view, and UI placement. In summary, this work introduces a lightweight, all-day, wearable display with real-time speech recognition, translation, and sound annotation all within the wearer's field of view. We add to emerging research, namely the work by Jane et al, that discusses the opportunities for head-worn captioning displays while engaging in on-the-go activities. Future work seeks to continue refining and evaluating the prototype across different usage contexts and with a larger number of participants. This includes a greater understanding of multiple speaker contexts and of public environments. Future work will also extend to the context that conversational partners who did not self-identify as deaf or hard of hearing expressed interest in. These were contexts where all conversational members imagined themselves turning on a head-worn captioning display. We'd like to thank our collaborators outlined in the paper. This work was completed in collaboration with Alex Olwal, Kevin Balki, Dimitri Bontasev, Thatch Starner, Paula Khan, Bonnie Chin, and Benoit Korda. Thank you.